All right, so this video is a follow-up to a video that I'd done previously about highlighting text on a video or image inside Premiere Pro. I had a user reach out to me with a comment on that video about how when they use the effect, it would create these little gaps inside the letters, like here on the C of this word, or in the D or the O, or anywhere there's a tight space. The paint bucket effect had an issue coloring those areas. And I'd noticed that before too, but the effect basically got the job done that I was looking for, so I wasn't too worried about it. Still, the paint bucket effect, if you watched that previous video, you saw that it did have some glitches as I was trying to apply it to this same exact clip. Like it would just blank out at a couple of points when I was playing it back and I had to make some compromises or adjustments to get it to work for the duration of the clip. So while the paint bucket effect worked to accomplish this highlighting effect, it was glitchy and I found a better way, hence the purpose of this video. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just turn off this paint bucket effect. I could just delete it. I'm just gonna leave it there as a reference if I need it. And I'm gonna go here into my project window and create a new color mat. Same settings as the project. And this is where you're gonna pick whatever color you want for your highlight. I'm just gonna use yellow and call it yellow mat. And I'm gonna drag that yellow mat to the top of the clip that I wanna highlight. And in the effect controls for that yellow mat, I'm just gonna drop down the blend mode options here and change it to darken so you can see that layer underneath. I don't need to see or use this yellow mat just yet, so I'm gonna temporarily disable it and go back into my video clip and create a mask around the area that I want to be highlighted, just like I did in the previous video. And a quick side tip here, to make any real fine tune adjustments, I'm gonna just slide this yellow mat up and copy this clip to the layer directly above it and delete the mask on the bottom clip, go back into the clip with the mask, and then I can see around that mask to make any further adjustments that I wanna make. Make sure it fits into all the little spaces that I want it to. All right, with that just like I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that bottom layer, slide this one back down and slide my mat back down. And now that I have the mask shaped like I want it for that text, it's gonna be a problem because the video layer moves. And I talked about this in my last video, so I don't need to go in too much depth about it. You can just reference that if you want, but basically you just need to motion track this mask so that it stays with the text for the movement of the video. So to do that, I'm just gonna go and hit the play button right here for that mask and let it track it, create those keyframes for all the little movements. All right, and if I drag that playhead back, you can see the mask moves with the text, perfect. And just to fill in the blanks, I'm gonna go ahead and track backwards to get the rest of the keyframes for the whole clip. Not necessary, but just to be consistent. Okay, so I'm not gonna need the mask on this video clip. So what I'm gonna do is just highlight that mask. Command C to copy on my Mac, or Control C to copy if you're on a PC, of course. Highlight my yellow mat, and then highlight opacity in the effect controls. Command V to paste. And now that mat has the mask. So I'm gonna right click the mat to enable it again. And you can see that it's now representing just the area over the text that we want. And this is where we go back to the video clip and delete the mask so we can see the rest of the video. And we've got a moving highlight right where we want it. Now, if that highlight doesn't look exactly like you want it to on the mat, you can go under the opacity and change the blending mode by just hovering the mouse and scrolling that wheel down to see what those different options look like. I think I like the way soft light looks the best, so I'm gonna leave it there. And I don't want that effect to come in until that little arrow shows up, so I'm just gonna drag the playhead right here, create a keyframe for opacity, back it up a few frames, create another keyframe for opacity, drop it to zero, and now that fades in where I want it. And we're done. So that I feel like is a more natural and realistic looking highlight than we could create with the paint bucket effect. Just a more efficient, cleaner way to do it. So just wanted to create a follow-up video and communicate that in case you were having the same kind of issues with that paint bucket effect. Or maybe you found this video first and you're learning the best way right off the bat. So either way, hopefully you got what you need. All right, thanks for watching.